welcome to another episode of Scott Reads Comics. Today we'll be looking at a pretty incredible and influential issue in the world of comic books. Marvel Comics G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 21. Labeled on the cover as the most unusual G.I. Joe story ever, and I would probably agree with that. This was published in 1983 by Marvel at near what would be the height of G.I. Joe's popularity in comics. They were a viable toy line. There were commercials on TV at this point. The three and three quarter inch action figure line for the toys was booming. And we get this amazing issue of G.I. Joe. And we've got snake eyes on the cover, uh, festooned with uh, all kinds of cool military special ops gear and firing his Mac-10 at what, what looks like on full auto. A tremendous cover by artist Ed Hannigan and Claus Jansen. And folks, it gets even better in the interior. So let's dive in. This is the famous silent interlude. Larry Hama is the story and breakdown artist and really the heart and soul of G.I. Joe for over a decade. Steve Lealoha on the finishes George Russo's coloring, Denny O'Neill, editor, Jim Shooter, editor-in-chief. You're going to notice in this issue, as we move along, there's no dialogue. So the title is incredibly fitting, silent interlude. We have here an um, uh, amazing shot on this uh, splash page of a uh, cobra flying wing uh, with what looks like uh, Storm Shadow the Ninja and somebody is trussed up and he's heading towards what is obviously a Cobra base here. And awesome shot, uh, side panel shot here of Storm Shadow as he comes in for his landing. And we get this cool panel here of Cobra Commander uh, it, it, with a full assembly of Cobra Troopers with these two flaming braziers, these braziers. Uh, on either side of them, very neat, almost uh, trying for the will style uh, 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 assembly going on here. And Storm Shadow lands and very well communicated here. He has something to show Cobra Commander. Who is this mysterious prisoner? Awesome uh, panel here of him drawing his katana and Great shot here of him slashing and, and, and oh my gosh, is he disemboweling this this poor prisoner? No, he merely cuts her free and it is Scarlet of uh, one of the mainstays of the G.I. Joe team. And Cobra Commander is shocked. Great shot here of his shock. And um, he dismisses um, Storm Shadow and has them take Scarlet away. She's been taken to the bowels of this uh, very uh, menacing Cobra base. And we see that Storm Shadow is not the only one flying to this base this night. It's silhouetted on the moonlight, the uh, silhouette of a plane on this full moon. Very wonderful use of color by George Russo's here, too. Everything works in tandem. Hama's breakdowns, Lealoha's finishes, the colors, and of course, there are no letters. Um... There really, thus far, aren't even any sound effects. So it truly is a completely silent issue. And who is in this plane? Um, it's a one-man rescue squad. It's Snake Eyes. And we have the awesome panel sequence here of Snake Eyes parachuting from this um, uh, transport plane toward the Cobra base, free-falling at this point. We can see his awesome um, Uzi, or I think that's an Uzi, not a Mac-10. Uh, hanging from his web gear. And again, I love these purple backgrounds from Russo's. Very cool. And here, um, Scarlet, a little worse, worse for the wear, is chained up. And is she being questioned or, or tortured or in some way um, uh, being um, uh, questioned by uh, Storm Shadow here? But she uh, gives him a little bit of resistance with a quick bite to his thumb. And he thinks to um, take his rage out on her, but thinks better of it. So great panel sequence here of him overcoming his anger 
at her resistance and then leaping out of the chamber and leaving her alone. Nice silhouette of her here at the end. Again, that beautiful purple or mauve background is really cool in this issue. A very feisty looking Scarlet there too. Beautiful. So here we have really some of our only words in this issue. Uh, we have uh, Destro in another office here in this base. He's looking at a computer file. Factors, altitude of intruder aircraft, high wind velocity, darkness, lack of landing zones, probability of successful airborne insertion, 0.000018%. So very awesome Destro here from uh, Hama and Lealoha. I love Steve Lealoha, an extremely underrated artist, did fantastic work on Spider-Woman. I've covered him on the show before when I did that issue of Spider-Woman um, many, many episodes ago. And he's really a dynamite on the finishes on this one. And here, look at this incredible panel of snake eyes coming down and he lands right on the Cobra head. And then he's gonna rappel down into the base. So awesome, this sequence here. Just four panels, but telling so much story in those four panels as he comes down. Oh, and before I turn the page, look at this great little, I don't know what it is, a chess set or something on Destro's desk. I want to know more about that. Is he collecting G.I. Joe action figures? Who knows? But very cool little detail there from Larry Hama and Steve Lealoha. And I like the tech here, this radar dish. So... Scarlet is not merely some damsel in, dis in distress to wait for rescue. And this panel sequence here, awesome, as she digs a bobby pin out of her hair and begins to work on her own escape as she's going to undo her manacles. Back to Snake Eyes, he continues to rappel down. He's going to get the drop on this uh, unwitting Cobra sentry here and takes him down, presumably. We'll see, off panel. Meanwhile... Back in Destro's office, we do see it is a chess set. Very cool. All the pieces on the on the board here. Looks like Rock and Roll, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Hawk, Cobra Commander, Storm Shadow, a Cobra Soldier. Oh, there's Quint, one of my favorite G.I. Joe characters of all time. Such an awesome character. The Baroness, Destro's love. Very cool to see that. And... We have Storm Shadow here. It looks like the legs of Storm Shadow standing over that trap door, maybe to Scarlet's cell. Take a look here as we turn the page. Yes, it is Storm Shadow. And he's going back for more for Scarlet, but she is ready for him as she wraps the chain around him. She's freed herself. She, great, great panel here of her pulling him down then and boosting herself up. But Storm Shadow is not one to be dismissed so easily. But Scarlet grabs this lid which had been laying to the side here and clubs him with it. So that should stun him for at least a second to let her get away. Amazing sequence here. No need for dialogue. The art is doing all of the heavy lifting here and it's doing it so well. Again, with this purple background from Russo showing the night, the darkness. Um, and here we have Snake Eyes has taken this sentry out. I love that he's helmetless and his hair is visible now. Still in his goggles. Two other sentries come and find Snake Eyes. Looks like they've got some kind of AK-47. But one thing about G.I. Joe, the difference between the comic and the cartoon, it's like as wide as the Grand Canyon because bullets fly and none die in the cartoon, but in the comic book, it's no holds barred. And here Snake Eyes pulls a knife because he knows he needs to be quiet, and he dispatches this guy, um with a knife throw, a deadly knife throw into the midsection and then chops this other guy, chops the weapon from his hand and here they struggle and Snake Eyes ends, because he is a master, master martial artist, flips him over, the guy's choking him from behind, he flips him over and the guy goes plummeting uh, to the earth. But in this incredible panel, he's plummeting down and in, meanwhile Destro in his office sees him flying by the window, which is totally great and there's the chest set again. So now Destro knows, and he's marshaled a cadre of troops, and they're they're gonna they're gonna figure something out here to try to figure out who's breaking in to the installation. Um, so fantastic sequence there. Okay. Meanwhile, back on the roof, one of the soldiers that um, Destro or that uh, Snake Eyes had just uh, disabled 
seemingly gesturing that uh, his assailant went that way. So uh, Destro is going to run and send some other guys the other way to envelop him. And uh, meanwhile, it was a bit of uh, ledger domain on Snake Eye's part. He is, uh, has uh, basically disguised himself as a Cobra Trooper. Meanwhile, the other Cobra Trooper is hanging uh, from the parapet here um, without any of his clothes on, just in his skivvies. Snake Eyes discards the helmet and takes off the rest of the disguise, and he's going to be on the move again. Meanwhile, we see the trap door where Scarlet, um, entry to where Scarlet was being held, and now we see um, Storm Shadow. He is uh, activating some additional assistance. We have these creepy red ninjas here. Uh, almost like hand ninjas. I feel like I'm an issue of Miller Daredevil here, but these are G.I. Joe's universe uh, answer to uh, hand ninjas. These three guys leap down and they are ready to serve Storm Shadow. And the, uh, the Cobra flying wing that uh, Storm Shadow flew he and Scarlet in on, Scarlet thinks it's going to be her ticket out. So she has, once again still has that chain as her only weapon, and she's going to use it to take out these two Cobra guards carrying it. And now she's going to get out of here. Great three-panel sequence of her swinging the chain, wrapping it around these guys' necks, and clonking their heads together. And she's on the, uh, on the wing and out as she activates the jets to take off. Meanwhile, Snake Eyes has shown up and found that Scarlet has managed to rescue herself prior to him getting there to rescue her, but those red ninja, those menacing red ninja, and I don't know if they ever did action figures for these guys. I don't remember because I was buying these action figures at this time. I would have been 13. I couldn't resist even though I realized, oh, I'm 13. I probably shouldn't be playing with toys anymore. I couldn't stop myself. I was still buying them. Uh, but anyway, the red ninja attacks, but Snake Eyes is uh, too, uh, too canny. You can't sneak up on him, and he ducks. And again, the lid is used as a weapon as he bashes this ninja down and then seemingly finishes him off. Great, great three-panel sequence here of the, that exchange of blows. Very awesome. So this ninja taken out, the lid's still on top of him. Great uh, um, flourish there from Hama and uh, Lealoha. Snake Eyes is going up the stairs and he realizes he faces another foe. I love seeing that reflection in the visor showing us what he's seeing. It's the ninja with a sigh. Great panel here of him spinning those sigh and brandishing. And Snake Eyes, never one to uh, screw around, uh, actually throws a grenade. And this is an awesome panel where this guy realizes, oh no. And then, yes, the explosion totally takes him out. And it's awesome. The, there's nothing left but some cinders in a shattered doorway. So totally great there. Uh, reminds me of that awesome scene in the first Raiders of the Lost Ark with the Cairo Swordsman where he's brandishing his weapon and Indy just pulls out his gun and shoots him. Going through the doorway though, Snake Eyes is aware that he's about to be attacked by two more assailants, including Storm Shadow himself. Catches um, the chain weapon of uh, the Red Ninja Stops his uh, scythe attack, and then Storm Shadow sweeps in to finish him while he's tied up. But Snake Eyes, again, too canny a fighter, turns the Red Ninja in the path of Storm Shadow's katana, and Storm Shadow ends up slicing the Red Ninja probably to death. And here we see an ex incredible exchange of agility and blows as the unarmed Snake Eyes leaps and kicks Storm Shadow and then darts away. Meanwhile, Scarlet is <clears throat> zooming around this base trying to find her way out on the flying wing. And here she sees Snake Eyes as she's about to leave. And I love the smile on her face because she loves Snake Eyes and, and possibly he loves her. Um, and she realizes he had must have been there to rescue her, but now she can do him a good turn. And so Snake Eyes is waiting to be extracted, exfilled, and meanwhile, Storm Shadow has recovered. Scarlet sees that, and a neat little no notice here, this little uh, bit of uh, Storm uh, Shadow's forearm wrappings is coming free, and that's gonna be important in a second. As uh, Scarlet sees him, and she's gonna intercede 
because she sees that Snake Eyes is unarmed. She's going to land and try to block Storm Shadow's incredible uh, throw of his katana. This is an awesome panel here. The eyes are just so incredible, and they tell the whole story there of the intensity of this exchange. And this three-panel sequence is awesome. Snake Eyes behind Scarlet. Scarlet knows she's about to die. She's going to take this blow for Snake Eyes, but Snake Eyes isn't going to let it happen. An incredible display of his martial arts prowess. He grabs the blade out of midair and flips it away out of danger to Scarlet. What an incredible sequence. And again, the purple by Russo's here. I just love it. Consistent throughout the book and the backgrounds. And here we see... Um, the two of them rocketing away. And it's been established already from the beginning of the book that this wing could carry two individuals. And so <clears throat> these critical last two panels are really going to set the stage for what comes up later in the series as, as, the, as the tale of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow begins to unfold. We see Snake Eyes' glove is torn and it reveals a very distinctive tattoo. And here those loosened wrappings on Storm Shadow in the very last panel, and love these long panels, reveal the same sort of tattoo. So we know, without a single caption, without a single snatch of dialogue, that these two characters have a history, that they are inextricably linked in some way. And that through the brilliance of this story, without a single bit of dialogue, not a single word balloon, we've learned that. And we've also experienced this incredible adventure of Snake Eyes, rescuing Scarlet, but in reality, Scarlet rescuing Snake Eyes, leaving Storm Shadow behind to stew over the whole affair. Just an absolute tour de force, regarded by many as the greatest G.I. Joe story ever. Uh, I would definitely put it up there in my top three, no doubt. So, post box, the pit, the letters page for G.I. Joe. Let me see if there's anything good in here. Uh, any any notable names? Um, let's see here. Quick read through. See if anyone comes to mind. Not really, but we'll go ahead and read this short letter from uh, Private Dennis uh, uh, Verazaro from Marietta, Georgia. Dear Denny and Linda, G.I. Joe number 18 displayed the qualities that have made this title the success it is. Both the art and the scripting were excellent. The current plot line has given us a good look at all of the characters. Such character development makes this comic even better. I'm sure the climax to this saga has, uh, has been worth the wait. So great letter there of praise for, this, for the series. And a nice little ad in the corner here for the Micronauts. Love that Jackson Geis artwork. Man, was he good. And I want to do some mark Micronauts on the show with the Jackson Guy's art. Let's read the next issue box. After Cobra Commander's assault on the pit, the Joes must rebuild their headquarters and lay the dead to rest. But Cobra launches a sneak attack that could wipe them out. Plus, two members make a dramatic debut. Be here in 30 days for Like Chimney Sweeps Come to Dust. So that was G.I. Joe number 21, The Immortal Silent Interlude. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and tell your friends. And I'll bring you more later on Scott Reed's Comics. Thanks for watching.